In looking at flight training, airlines like to use simulators to accomplish this training rather than using their airplanes, which then have to be taken out of regular service and sometimes would be undergoing some fairly unusual things in the course of flight training required for crew members. Um, for example, uh, Appendix H is going to provide the information needed for the air carrier to know what can be done in simulators. And most air carriers are going to use at least a level C or higher simulator for flight training. Just a quick example of an accident that happened with wake turbulence encounter was Delta Airlines Flight 97, correction, 9570 in Fort Worth where it was a DC-9 following a DC-10 doing flight training and it actually crashed um, the DC-9 was following the DC-10 too closely, it crashed with wake turbulence and four crew members doing flight training were killed. So obviously airlines have moved away from this uh, in using advanced simulators instead of having to use airplanes for this type of simulate for this type of flight training. Let's talk about the people that do this flight training um, at the air carriers and these people are called check airmen. So this is someone who is a person who has been qualified through a check airman training program and they are basically the flight instructors for the air carrier. And uh, fairly self-explanatory how their training programs are going to work, um, but if we look at, if you start an air carrier or add a totally new type of airplane, the interesting thing is how do you qualify someone to be a check airman if you don't have anybody, any training program really written or any other Czech airmen to train those people. So if part of becoming a Czech airman is being checked by another Czech airman, you have a problem if you're starting an airline or adding a new type of airplane to your fleet. And so what, what a new airline is going to do is make a group of people identify them as the initial cadre of Czech airmen. Or if they're adding a new airplane type, they're going to have an initial cadre check airman, like Envoy did this when they added the Embraer 170 to their fleet. And what the airline then does is these initial cadre check airmen, they train each other. Then the FAA checks the first check airman during the what's called the proving flights. So in proving flights, the airline has to demonstrate that they can operate the airplane safely with all the people who are required and with FAA people on board. And in this process, the FAA inspector is going to check these first check airmen during the proving flights. The initial two check airmen would then be able to check the other initial cadre check airmen until you get all of them checked. And then, then these initial cadre check airmen, they get really busy because then they are going to conduct the initial operating experience of other captains and first officers. Here are two um, people who are Letourneau grads uh, flying at Air Wisconsin and one of them is on the left is a new captain upgrading. This is Chris Sigley who graduated in 2006 and on the right is uh, his Czech airman John Sensing who graduated in 1996 and he is the Czech airman there at Air Wisconsin uh, that's checking Chris and giving him his initial operating experience, his initial experience as a captain, and doing that initial training with passengers on board. This is called initial operating experience. A little more that goes into behind the scenes during the initial certification of a new airplane into a new fleet or a new airline, you have um, competency checks which have to occur. And so when I was working at Dynamic Airways, we were starting our airline and I was qualified as an air transportation supervisor so I was trained to be a flight follower at our airline which was a supplemental airline so we did not need dispatchers but what I had to do initially was give what's called competency checks to our to our flight followers to the other flight followers and so but I was not yet qualified either because we were all brand new so what I had to be had, what I had to have happen is I had to be the first person to dispatch our flights under supervision of an FAA dispatch inspector. And once I passed my competency check, 
then I was the flight follower on duty and I was qualified. And then I was able to give competency checks to our other flight followers or dispatchers as they did their work during the rest of the flights where we again demonstrated to the FAA that we could run the airline. These are called the proving runs. So during the proving runs, um, I got checked out by the FAA. The next day I checked out another flight follower and then another flight follower and then another flight follower until we had our people all checked out. And then once they had all finished their competency checks, then they were qualified to exercise operational control. But during all the competency checks, I, the instructor or air transportation supervisor, which I was, I was the person who was actually given that authority to exercise operational control. And not until the competency check was passed was the person I was checking able to exercise operational control.